good evening. Welcome to Right Direction Church International. Yeah. Oh, we yeah. give you glory. Hallelujah, yeah. Lord God. You're such a great God, and we welcome you into this place. Yeah. We welcome you into this room, God. Saturate us, God. Saturate yeah. us, God. You've never let us down. You've never lost a battle. You've never lost a fight. Put your hands together. Hallelujah, Lord God. Oh, we worship you right here, God. Said my hope, my hope is in you. Is in you. I trust. I trust. And your unfailing love, your unfailing love. My, strength my strength is renewed, is renewed. you reign And your unfailing love, my strength is renewed. You reign forever. I will run and I will walk and I will obey. You are my strength. Hey, say you are my. You are my strength. You are my strength. Hey, 
If you know God's never let you down, lift your voice. Hey, lift your voice. And give him glory. Hey, hey, hey. never fail you. He'll never quit on you. Great is your faithfulness morning by morning. Somebody give him the glory because he's been right there all the time. Hey! I'm really trying to move but I feel something right in that space. I feel something right in that space. I feel like I got a few witnesses in the room that can testify that he was there. Lift those voices while your hands are raised. Lift your voices. Somebody worship the Father. Come on, his glory is here. His presence is here. His presence is here. He's God and we worship him. And there's nothing like his presence. Come on, open up your mouth. Come on, open up your mouth. Thank him for his presence. Let's go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Father. There's nothing like your presence. We exalt you tonight. We bless you tonight. Yes, Jesus. We lift you up, Father. You're worthy. Yes, you are. Hallelujah. So we say, there's nothing like your presence, Lord. All I want is to be with you. There's nothing like your presence, Lord. All I want is to be with you. There's nothing like your presence, Lord. All I want is to be with you. There's nothing like your presence, Lord. All I want is to be with you. You be with you. That's all I want, Jesus. Everybody say, there's nothing like it. Yeah. All I want. Nothing like your presence, yeah. All I want is the, nothing like your presence. Oh, 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 all I want. Nothing like your presence. All I want is to be with you. Come on, sing it out, church. You to be with. Let's cut across, James. Let's go.
worship. You are. That's it. Come on. And we. You are God. Everything I need, everything I want, Jesus. You are God. One more time. You are God. Say, you are. Sing it with me. Say all my life. Say all my, my life. You have been faithful. When I look back over my life, I can say all. All my life. You have been so, so, so good with every, every breath that I have made. Oh, I will. I will of the goodness. Of the goodness. I need this room to erupt right there. Sing on my. Everybody say, all my life, say. Come on, think back on what the Lord has done for you. All my life. All my life, you have been so, so good. With every breath. Every breath that I am made. Oh, I will. Oh, I will. Sing. Of the goodness. Of the and your goodness is running now. It's running after me, everyone's here. Your goodness is running out, it's running out. With my life laid down, with my life laid I surrender.
the whole room is singing. All my life, all my life you have been so, so every breath, every breath that I have Sing it out. Oh, I, of the goodness. Last time, everybody. You have been faithful, you have been faithful all my life. All my life you have been so, so good. good. Everywhere that I have been. I will sing. Oh, I wow. Of, of the goodness. Now, somebody just thank him for his goodness tonight. Somebody just thank him for his goodness tonight. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, has God been faithful to anybody in here tonight? Has God been faithful to you? Has he been good to you? Has he been good to you today? Hallelujah. We bless the name of Jesus. Come on, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Bless the name of Jesus. Father, we're so grateful that you blessed us, that you kept us, that you brought us here this night, this time with these people. Now, Holy Spirit, we welcome you into this place to do what you want to do here tonight. Thank you that it's not by accident nor coincidence that we're here, but we're here because of your goodness to us. We're here because of your faithfulness to us. By this we know that you favor us. Because the enemy has not triumphed over us. If it had not been for the Lord on our side, the enemy would have swallowed us up. God, we give you glory. You said that the vision is for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak. Thank you that this is our time. Thank you that the vision has Hallelujah. spoken and we give you glory and we give you honor and we magnify the name of Jesus. Now, Holy Spirit, do what you want to do in this place tonight. We open up our hearts. We open up our minds. We open up our spirits to hear what the Spirit of the Lord will say to us tonight. Let it not just be a time of rejoicing, but Father, let this night be a night of change. Let it be a night of impartation. Let it be a night of correction. Let it be a night of revelation. And we give you praise, glory, and honor for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, come on. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Y'all ain't praising enough up in here. Before you be seated, when you look at your neighbor around you, tell him, if you're not here to praise, you're on the wrong road. If you're not here to praise, yeah, tell, him, tell him there's some room in the back. We still, I still see a few seats. If you're not here to praise, you might, you might need to take a... Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Glory to God, 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 glory to God. I got a reason to give God praise. I got a reason to give him glory. I got a reason to shout. I got a reason to dance. I got a reason to lift my hands. I got a reason to turn around. When I think of the goodness of Jesus, and all done for me my soul cries out hallelujah look where he brought me from look where me from he didn't have to do it but he did all right all right all right we got to move you may be seated amen come on let's thank god for before i forget and get to talking my lovely beautiful wife tonight dr marcia bailey the first lady of right direction church international who has tolerated me for 38 plus years 
and I think she's stuck with me now. She ain't going nowhere, but I don't take it for granted. God is good, amen. And I want to thank God right in advance right now for all the pastors, bishops who are here with us from around the country. Right direction, we got folks who love us, y'all. Amen, pastors, bishops, to come on, stand up. I'm not going to start calling names. I'm going to forget somebody or leave somebody out, but I want to thank you for coming to worship with us and to celebrate with us tonight. Glory to God. And uh, we're going to officially introduce some more later, but of all the people that could be in the room, my pastor, Bishop Thomas Dexter Jakes, is with us tonight. Come on! I, I know y'all came to celebrate with us, and coincidentally, he happens to be here. So you get a twofer. Praise God. You may be seated. Well, our media department, this is a special night for us, and we came in here Sunday and tried to work out some kinks, our first service, but this is our official dedication service, and our media department has has prepared something that I have not seen yet. So I'm gonna see it right along with you. But I believe it's a little bit of our history, chronologic, kind of chronologic and what God has done for us and where he has brought us. So go ahead and media and show that now. The vision is for an appointed time, but at the end, it will speak. Today we are rejoicing that 20 plus years of vision is speaking loudly and clearly. And the time has come where we are seeing it come to pass. Well, honey, here we are. Here we are. July 2023, mm -hmm. and we have finished our new sanctuary and moving into our new sanctuary, dedicating our new sanctuary. Yeah. What's your thoughts? It's amazing. Um, it's surreal, you know? Um, you know, just recently, having the opportunity to kind of go in there, we did a, uh, a volunteer meeting in there, and I just felt a need to kind of look at you doing what you do, ministering before the Lord, ministering to people, training, and the people from different angles. Mm. You know, just seeing, God, you did this. God, you did this. And it's just amazing because it's, it feels like, I mean, it's been a lifetime for us. I feel like it's been a lifetime coming. You know, um, and we say a lifetime. Years, like ooh. so. We, we've been. I met you in 1983. We got married in 1985. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't say in 1983, 1985. One day, I'm going to build this 17 million dollar mm -hmm. church. Mm -hmm. So, what do you mean when you say it's been a lifetime? For us, our journey in ministry. We have friends who um, started out around the same time we started out and um, built earlier. You know, um, we also planned to build earlier, you know, and we, we knew we would one day build. Even when we started out in ministry, study, launched Right to Mexico Church International, we knew one day we would build. Right. So that's why I say it's a lifetime, because we here we are 27 years of ministry, and now we're getting ready to walk into our new building. That's a lifetime compared to our age, and other people, it seemed like a lifetime. You know, the Bible said we walk by faith, mm -hmm. not by sight. And so, you know, when I think back to uh, April of 1996, when we had our first service at the Holiday, Holiday Inn Express, Inn. Yeah. the Holiday Inn Express, not far from here, about a mile or two from here on uh, St. Andrews Road, um, you know, I just did, we just operate step by step in faith, from faith to faith. Um, we didn't know where we were going exactly. We just know we had a word from God. That's it. And we just move, um, and God yeah. just continued to order yeah. our steps and direct our path. And so, you know, I think about we're sitting here right now after one of our new Bible studies um, here in this sprung worship facility mm -hmm. that took all the faith we had at that time to build this right. in 2004, uh -huh. and we built this because we needed a place quickly. We built um, this sprung facility to seat a thousand people, jam-packed with people everywhere, mm -hmm. um, and standing, almost standing room only to get a thousand people. But we did this to just keep moving forward. I mean, we were growing so fast at that time. We were one of the, considered by your church magazine, which I don't believe there is anymore, one of the fastest growing churches in the Southeast. 
Um, and so we did this then just to keep moving. And one thing I learned uh, over this journey is that we have to keep moving by faith. Yeah. God is not a stale God. God is not a stagnant God. Mm. And we just kept moving. Mm. And I believe God right-sized it. And he told us to move forward in the midst. I like that. In the midst yeah. of the world's pandemic. Mm -hmm. He told us to keep moving forward. Yeah. And one of the things I still often tell uh, people is that when we, was, we were getting ready to break ground in 2020, mm -hmm. COVID-19 happened mm -hmm. when in the midst of COVID, the pandemic, and the bank calls me up and says, uh, Bishop Bailey, we're not going to um, stop this but we're going to just put a hard, I'd say, a, this is a hard yellow light. Mm -hmm. It's not a red light, definitely not a green light. We're going to put a hard yellow light. We're going to pause this, and we're going to see what happens with this pandemic, what happens with the economy, yeah. what happens with the bank, right. and what's going to happen with your church. Right. And I remember faith rose up in me. Okay. And I told uh, the vice president of the bank at that time, I said, well, I'm, I'm praying for the economy. And I'm praying for your bank. But I said, as far as the church, mm -hmm. we're going to be all right. You know, I just really believe that the scripture said, Jesus said, upon this rock I build my church mm -hmm. and the gate to hell will not prevail against it. And we went forward and we built in spite of the fact that there were other preachers and yeah. people who told us we're crazy. Why would you build now? People are speaking demise. I hate to say this, y'all. Yeah. People, men and women of God are speaking demise over the church. Like the church's greatest hour is somewhere behind us. No, we are now in the church's greatest and hour. And the Lord gave you a word that this is the church's it's greatest, greatest hour. hour. Right. And people are saying stuff like, well, people aren't coming to church anymore. And I said, well, we're not building for who's not coming. Mm -hmm. We're building for who's coming. Mm -hmm. Those who are presently coming and those who are coming in the future. And I'm just so excited that that we were just faithful and obeyed God and moved forward. And we made a confession we will build without stress, strain, or struggle. Yeah. And it's just wonderful to see God manifest his word. Right. And you slept at night. I slept at night. Mm -hmm. I would, there were times, it, almost two weeks would go by. Pastors, there's times I almost two weeks would go by and I wouldn't even go and look at the facility. I was busy. I was doing other stuff. And God gave me good staff. Yes, he did. And a good help mm -hmm. who were overseeing things. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to be right. on the project every day and stressing and worrying. This has been our easiest project. Oh. We built the Sprung facility in 2004, paid that off in 2005, $1.2 million we built. We built our um, our Family Life Center in 2008, $4.4 million, paid that off in 2011. We built our Kids Town facility mm -hmm. in 2016, paid that off at uh, 2.2 million, 2.5 million, paid that off in 2018. And then here we are in 2022, we broke ground on this $17 million facility that we are now getting ready to occupy. Um, and the same God, same God who did that, he's going to do this yeah. again. And so we're looking forward not only to yes. occupying it, we're looking forward to burning the mortgage. Yes. Yes. You know, God is faithful. Movement of faith. God is faithful. God is faithful. He did it before. He'll do it again. Give the Lord a hand of praise tonight. Come on, let's put our hands together and give Jesus a hand of praise. I am so honored to be here tonight to celebrate with uh, Bishop and Dr. Bailey for this tremendous work that they have done. Can you just give it up for them tonight? Thank God for both of you. We honor you. This is amazing. You deserve the honor and the praise right now because God used you both to do this. Amen? And if you're a member of this church, come on, I want you to stand. If you're a member of support of this church, would you give it up to all people who stood behind them and support them? Come on, let's celebrate them. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. 
of course, to Bishop Jakes. We honor you tonight. You are such a anchor and a stone to so many of us, and we can't wait to hear the word of God from you tonight. Would you give it up again for Bishop Jakes? And to all the ministers, pastors, thank you for coming to support Bishop Bailey. I want to read a scripture, and then I'm here tonight to do what is, is right. I heard in the video, uh, Bishop Bailey mentioned that he wants to burn the mortgage. And for some of us, it may be scary. You know, that's pushing it, that's too much. Is, you know, that, is that possible? Think what, $18 million I heard or something like that? Uh, 17, 17, don't add one. Okay, I'll deduct one. <laughs> $17 million. But you have to understand, if you are a believer and you're reading your Bible, and you understand the God that you serve, the earth is is, and the fullness thereof. There's no bank on this earth that can fund God's agenda. But let me say it again. There's no bank on the earth that can fund God's agenda. When he puts something into our hearts, we must believe that our support system doesn't come from the system of this world. The Bible says, our God shall supply 50% of our need. I, I guess you read the same Bible I'm reading all of our need and if you ever start living by that principle that God is your source not your job not your business not the government now that's crazy if you ever think it's the government that's sustaining you as a kingdom citizen you're making the biggest mistake in your life God shall supply and I wonder if everybody in this room will begin to think for a moment. The earth is God's and the fullness thereof. And in the beginning, God stepped out of his world. We actually, as far as I know, there's nothing in the Bible that shows us where God came from. He didn't come from heaven. Because in the beginning, he created the heavens. So God is so unique awesome that he came from wherever old and the bible says and he showed up into nothingness the earth was without form and void and nothing was upon the face of the earth and then he started speaking and started speaking and every time he opened his mouth he said it was good and what i loved about it is every time he spoke something then it came into being. If you ever use your words, like Bishop and Dr. Bailey, when everybody was doubting them and begin to say, I believe God. I believe that he will sustain me. I believe that God will open the windows of heaven. I believe God for that house. I believe God for that car. I believe God that I can do certain things. If you ever start living like that, you're gonna be surprised to see how God will align your words up with exactly what he wants to do in your life. The truth is, a lot of us as kingdom citizens are living beneath our privileges because we're trying to run our lives based on the system of the world. I believe tonight if we would stand with this church and say we're going to build God's house. I am believing God that God is going to miraculously uh, send the $17 million in no time to this church. Can we believe that? I'm not going to try to tell God how he's going to do it because he knows how to do it. I'm believing that in no time we will ne we'll hear, the next time we hear about this ministry, is that the, the mortgage is paid off. 
And I'm saying that even though I don't live in South Carolina, I live in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and, 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 and quite sure many of you visit in. I say that because that's how we ought to live as Christians. We don't need to get jealous over each other. Come on now. Would you touch your neighbor and say, stay in your lane? Because God will always, watch this, give you everything you need to be the best person in your lane. God has give, given this couple the grace to do what they're doing here in South Carolina. And I want you to stand with me tonight as I read this scripture, and I want you to sow into this ministry because I really believe that God has empowered this couple. It is a scripture that's taken from, if I can find it here quickly, it's Luke 16, verse 10. And it says, one who is faithful in a very little is also faithful in much. Bishop and Dr. Bailey, they were all faithful in a little. The school or where the, the Holiday Inn or wherever you said you started this ministry, they were faithful. They were faithful in the dome. And with the little, I've heard your pastors many times talked about how they sowed. Let me tell you something. The reason why they're here today is not just because they're good teachers, which they are. I really do believe why we're sitting in this auditorium today, it is a result of the seeds that they have sown into other people's lives. Oh, I wish somebody would give God a praise here tonight. So if you can be faithful with whatever little you have, or whatever much you have, because the next part of the verse says here, it says, and one who is dishonest in a very little, is also dishonest in much. People are saying, well, you know, I guess I'm waiting for when God would bless me, I will sow. That's not true. If you can't give out of the level that you're at, you know, come on now. If, if you can't even give $10,000 or $1,000 or $500 to your ministry, if you ever win the lottery or if you play it, you know, whatever you do, if somebody gave you a billion dollars, you certainly not going to give a hundred million dollars to the ministry. I want to say this, and I'm going to challenge you tonight. Start living the word. Look at your neighbor and say, start living the word. And how you live the word is to just do the word, act upon it, and watch what God will do in your life. It was so funny. I was backstage a moment ago with all the ministers, and we were talking, and they said something. I think it was Bishop Jake who said something back there, and immediately I'm reminded, Bishop Jake's, back in the, I think it was 90, 1997, when I invited you to come to Fort Lauderdale to my church. This is going to bless somebody. I didn't own a building of my own, except I did own the plaza. There was a little shopping center I owned, but I needed a bigger auditorium. And Bishop Jakes came, accepted the invitation, came to my church, and just, it was similar to this. We were seated over there, and he was here, and he was preaching, and he just happens to turn around, and he said, the building that you need it's already yours. I don't know if you remember, Bishop. The moment he said that, and immediately he challenged us to do something. I didn't ask him, but he challenged us to do something. And I said to God, true story, I said to God, I'm going to believe you now. I'm going to trust you because you have prompted me. Many of you, God is going to prompt you tonight to do something special. Why? Because, watch this, your obedience to the seed that you're going to give is going to open up an uncommon blessing in your life. Bishop Jakes read this scripture, Deuteronomy 1.11. I will never forget it for the rest of my life. Because quite honestly, I've never heard it before. Never heard it. And he said, the Lord God will make you a thousand times greater than you are. And I started, because I worked in finance, and I'm like, a thousand times more? 
In other words, wherever you are, God says, I'll increase you and multiply you, not 10 times, but a thousand times more. Long story short, I just wrote the check of a thousand dollars and I did something crazy because I needed a building. And finally, when I found the same building that I rented, the same auditorium that I rented to bring Bishop Jakes in, I now put a bid on the building and only had $120,000 in the bank. That's all I had. And then God said to me, sit down and write these names down. And I started writing down and I ended up writing 12 pastors along with the name of their churches. I wasn't the one who came up with the names. God inspired me and said, these are the 12 leaders I want you to bless. And then he said, give each of them $10,000. Now I gotta tell you something. I'm saved, sanctified, a good pastor. But that moment, I thought it was the devil speaking to me. And what made matters worse, some of the names that was on the list, I really didn't check for them. Can we just be honest? It is something when God tells you to give to someone that you don't like. Because giving has nothing to do with the person, but everything to do with your obedience to God. I emptied our church account completely and I was now in need of eight million dollars. And God looked at me when I was panicking and said, how could I give away $120,000 and I now need eight million dollars to close on the building. And he said to me, as quietly as ever, Henry, you don't have enough anyway. There are many of you in this room, you believe in God for something and you have a little. And God is saying, you don't have enough anyway. It's a seed. You can keep it, eat it. Or you can sow it and reap it. Ah! I released it all. And today, I've been in that building 22 years, and here's how I got it. I gave it all away, and it was on a Wednesday night. God allowed a white Caucasian man to come in that property, the old um, facility, and an old white man who didn't look like he had a penny. Be careful how you sum up people when you see them. You have no idea who God is sending your way. And this man said, I want to talk to Henry. He didn't call me no bishop. I don't care. If you got my blessing, you can call me any. Forget titles. And I sat down with him. And in 48 hours, he wired to our church's account. $6.7 million. And the reason why we didn't get all $8 million is because we knocked the price down to $7.7 .7 and then we put a half a million dollars down. He wired every penny to our account because I released a seed. Now I'm done. My time is up. But I am sent here today all the way from Fort Lauderdale to tell somebody who's sitting in this room and God is saying to you, that thing, that house, that car, the debt that you want to pay off, the business you want to start, the business you want to get out of debt, you're sitting in a miracle here. And what God is prompting you to do, do you really want to be a thousand times greater than you are? You cannot say this doesn't work if you've never tried it. 
So I'm going to pray and I'm going to ask every person in this house. I want pastors, if you can, join in with me. And I want every one of us to stand with this man of God and this woman of God. And I want us to dig deep into our resources. Don't limit yourself to this. If you can't, then fine. But if you can give more, I want you to give. I'm going to challenge every person to give a Deuteronomy 111 seed in this room tonight. I'll be the first. I want us to give a seed of a thousand. And for some of you, you're nervous. Listen, if you don't have that in your account, if there's no way you have it, God's not expecting you to give what you don't have. What is your amount? What is your little? Maybe your little is 10,000. Maybe your little is 1,000. But whatever you can give tonight, and I want every person, would be wonderful, because listen, the truth is, if, if something drastic would happen to you tonight and you had to find $1,000, you would. I want to see this debt paid off in no time. Amen. Do I have a witness here tonight? The ushers are standing around. I want every person to grab a hold of an envelope. Everybody, everybody, go ahead. Go, go ahead, just send it down the row and give it to them. And here's what I want you to do. If you're given, I think you're given electronically too, but for those of you who are given by envelope, I want you to write down, you don't have to, you know, spell out details, your business, but I want you to write that's one specific need you have in your life. What is that one specific need you have in your life? Don't put any limit on God now. He can do the supernatural. I don't care what it is. Get your business out of debt. He can pay off your mortgage. I have had a lady in my church just recently who testified who miraculously, um, she got a notice from her bank because I prophesied to the church and I said, somebody's mortgage is gonna be paid off. And a couple of people started screaming and some people get, get quiet. And that woman said, I heard it past I received it. Well, she got a notice from the bank and the bank sent her the deed to her house, the title. And she said, I didn't pay it off. And she said, Bishop, I tried to call. I, I, I told them I didn't pay it. They said, yes, we have a check here. It's paid. She said, I didn't pay it. And I said, first of all, that's the first mistake you made. If you get a letter saying it's paid, don't call nobody. <laughs> Run, sell it, do something. But you don't call nobody. Don't argue. But you know what she did? The bank told her. True story. The bank told her that someone paid her mortgage off $123,000. Just like that. Father, I've done my best to challenge your people, to prompt them to trust your word and to believe that in this very moment, they can have a Bethesda moment, no matter how broken wounded, challenge in life may be for them. If they would move from outside of the gates of miracles and step into the flow of the Holy Spirit, that thing that they've been praying for, yeah, they know. That thing that they've been believing you for, tonight is the night. You brought them here not only to hear a word, but you brought them here to challenge them to sow a seed that will meet their need. You said in your word, as long as the earth remains, there's seed time and harvest. If they would live by the word, not by the principles of this world, but by your word, they will see the miraculous power of what your word can produce in their lives. I thank you for this seed. We lift it up now in Jesus' name. Amen. If you're given electronically, I want you to pay attention on the screen and and go ahead and follow the prompts there. There are several ways you can give. I want every person. Now, I want those of you with the envelopes, do me a favor, if you have it, and you say, Pastor, I want to give a seed 
of a thousand dollars. Look, we don't need to belong this and belay this. We don't need to beg you. There's no need to beg. You either have it or you don't. But I'm talking to people who seriously want to have a Deuteronomy 11 moment. If that's you and you wrote down what you need God to do for you. Remember, I asked you to do that. I want you to come down here with it quickly. And then I want to pray a special prayer over your life. And then we're going to put it at the altar here. Come on, come on. If you did it, come on quickly. Don't wait on anybody. Just move. Just move. Come on, quickly. Come on, quickly. Quickly. Just move. Quickly. 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 A thousand. A thousand. And remember, look, if you got $10, don't try to come down here and put it in an envelope and say you got a thousand. Look, this is not to make anybody look good. It's, we don't have time for that. Come on. Let's just be honest before God and say, God, I bring this seed. So some of you, it's a sacrifice. Thank you, pastors. Just stay right there. I need your help. Thank you so much. Uh, Minister Campbell, could you get an envelope and write minds down, please? And here's my card and uh, wherever you are, uh, get because I want to get my seed in the ground. I never ask you to do something. Uh, where are you, Minister Campbell? Where are you? I want to make sure. All right. So come on down quickly, 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 quickly. Come on down quickly. Anybody else? Maybe God is speaking directly to somebody else. Now, the rest of you, whatever you got, I understand. Don't worry about it. We're going to pray. It doesn't mean we're better off than you. It means that in this season, we're able to sow. Amen. And the Lord bless you. Would you do me a favor? Stretch your hands towards all of us in the front here. And let me pray. Father, I thank you for these great men and women who have stepped up to the plate, who have said, look, we're, we believe in this man and this woman of God. We believe in this ministry. So therefore, we're going to sow our seed into this church, into this good soil. May you bless it, Father. Many of us, we have our own specific needs and we do understand the principles of sowing and reaping. So Father, we sow it in this ministry, believing it shall come to us a thousand times greater. We give you praise as you bless their homes, bless their businesses, bless their churches. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Would you give the Lord a hand of praise for them? Go ahead and place your seat. Go ahead and place your seat. Go ahead and place your seat. Please give electronically and the Lord richly bless you. Thank you so much for your obedience. Amen. Come on. Amen. Now the rest of you with the offering envelope, come on down. Come on. Come on. Come on down with it. If you haven't given it to an usher yet, just go ahead and make sure. Come on, sweetheart. Come on. Come on. Come on with it. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Thank you so much. Bless you. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Never be defeated. And because God is the greatest. Never be defeated. And Come on. because God, and because God, is the greatest, is the greatest power. We shall never, we shall never, never be defeated. Come on, the devil is a liar. And because oh. God, and because the greatest, is the greatest power. We shall never, we shall never, never be defeated. Never be defeated. Come on, clap your hands and say, I have. Now, I need to do something very quickly before I move forward. Um, in our Family Life Center, we have three vehicles that are blocking. I got to feed folks afterwards, and you are blocking our caterers. A Ford Titanium RBS 4441. We need you to move that car immediately at Dodge Durango, WRT 587, and a Toyota Tacoma, RJS 830. Please, quickly, if you can move those vehicles, we'd appreciate it so much. Amen. Well, y'all, it's preaching time. And 
I don't have time to give all of my appreciation and sentiments and sentiments personally that Bishop Jakes would once again grace this church with his presence. I believe this is I believe this is his fourth time uh, coming to speak. Come on, that's a blessing, y'all. We had to do something right because I have been places and I drove on the way home saying that is Alpha and Omega. So the fact that we've been able to get him back for the fourth time, that says something good about us here at Right Direction. And again, I'm not going to take, but I will say this, Bishop Jakes over the last seven, eight years has been such a blessing in my life. I specifically told Bishop Jakes I needed a pastor. And Bishop Jakes said to me, I will be to you whatever you need me to be. And over the last seven, eight years, he's done two major things that have been such a blessing in my life. And they have to do with ledges. Ledges. One, he has talked me off the ledge. And secondly, he has kept me from pushing people off the ledge. That's what a good pastor will do. He's talked me off the ledge and he said, don't do it, Bailey. Don't do it. These are still God's people. You can't just push them off the ledge. And so uh, we have an official video introduction of Bishop Jakes. Immediately upon the conclusion of that, I'm asking that we would all stand and honor, honor who John Hanna, who's going to be with us next month for the Swato encounter that Pastor Mars is hosting. Pastor John Hanna has given Bishop Jakes a new title, and that is the world's bishop, the bishop of the world. And so after we have this introduction, I'm going to ask that we all stand and welcome to this platform for the first time, the world's bishop, Bishop T.D. Jakes. Fuse to be defined by how you met me. That's just one dimension of who I am. By the time I got through making movies and writing books and building communities, they, they can't figure out what box to put me in. I'm always in transition. It's about remaining relevant. What do we do about this digital divide? What does real change look like? And doing something with what you have been given. Out of all the things you do, what are the things that you want to leave behind? Joining us now, T.D. Jakes. There's nobody I want to talk to this morning other than you. How do we embrace this moment? We control the destiny of our nation. This worldwide impact spans film, television, books, and music. Today's four-day mega fest, 560,000 people from 55 countries. Bishop Jakes, your message has touched the lives of millions of people throughout this world. Like the sky just opened up listening to T.D. Jakes. Greatest communicator on the planet. What's up? Just be inspirational and not transformation. His ministry has poured millions into poor Dallas neighborhoods. Tyler Perry is getting a new neighbor on the Fort McPherson property in Atlanta. You cannot be what you do not see. A new curriculum is being tied to an upcoming performance of Hamilton. Everything that I'm doing now is about training the next generation. When you know better, you do better. I think my destiny is to help you reach yours. Come on, put those hands together and give God just some praise, some glory, some honor. My God, my God, my God. Oh, you can do better than that. That's an applause. Let's give, let's give him a praise. Let's give him a praise. Let's charge the atmosphere. Let's charge the atmosphere. Let's, let's charge the atmosphere. Let's preheat the oven. Let's warm it up with glory and honor and thanks to God that he allowed us to live and be here for this moment. To God be the glory. 
to God be the glory for the things he has done. Many of the people who started with Bishop and Dr. Bailey are not alive to see this moment, but God saw fit for you to be here. And you ought to give him the glory and the praise and the honor. You may be seated, grace and peace be multiplied unto you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I am uh, so happy to be here uh, with Bishop Bailey and Dr. Bailey on this momentous occasion. Come on, let's give it up for great leadership. Great leadership. The incremental determination to push forward, the incremental determination to push forward has been exemplified before us uh, in this amazing edifice, which stands as a testimony that in the midst of COVID-19 and people receding into hiding and big name businesses shutting down, Toys R Us going out of business, J.C. Penney's, Sears Roebuck reducing down to little of nothing in the midst of all kinds of companies closing, that God led right direction. And if you don't belong to this church, whatever your church is, if your church is still standing, can I get 30 seconds of just crazy praise? Just... No, not cute praise. I mean crazy. Yeah, gratitude, 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 gratitude. Gratitude is an attitude. Gratitude is an attitude. Gratitude is an ego buster. Gratitude will elicit spontaneous praise. Gratitude doesn't need a beat or a drum. Gratitude comes up out of your spirit to God be the glory for the things he's done. I'm, I'm so honored. Let me move along. I, I, I started out having my assistant jot, jot down names as different pastors I saw came in and after it got up to about 25, I said, well, I'm gonna do like they do in Nigeria. I stand on the protocol that has already been offered. All the pastors and bishops and elders and apostles and potentates and sons and daughters of my ministry and other ministries that are here, would you stand for a moment? We do really wanna celebrate you. Come on, would you stand up? I'm honored, I'm honored to see you. Many of you are busy, but you came out. I'm honored to have you and to be a part of this, this moment, this amazing moment in history. Can you say amen? I'm gonna take just a moment of selfishness and mention two things to you. One is I've set the dates for my International Leadership Summit and I know you pastors need them in advance because your calendars are filling up. March the 21st through the 23rd, set it on your calendar. We're gonna turn Dallas upside down. Trust me, believe me and I want you to be a part of what we have prepared for you. And then to those of you uh, tonight uh, that have heard of, read, thought about, or imagine, I just did a book, Disruptive Thinking. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> On the New York Times list for about six straight weeks, Give God a big praise for that. 
I don't say that to glory in the flesh in any kind of way, but when you get on the Times list, then the New York uh, Times and all the bookstores have to pay attention to a country preacher that was born in the hills of West Virginia in a little raggedy house on the side of the road. New York never would have ever thought that they would have to pay us any attention, but when God decides to raise you up, no devil in hell can take you down. Can I get, can I get a, can I get a, can I get one? Can I get just one person? Anybody who came from nothing to something, is there anybody in here that can, can relate to that? And some through the water and some through the flood and some through the fire, but all through the blood. Can you relate to that? Shout yes, somebody. In the interest of time, I, I do believe God's given me a word uh, on this momentous occasion. I want you to go quickly to the book of Hebrews, chapter 8, verse 1 through 5. And uh, if you want me to feel real at home, uh, stand to your feet so I can think I'm at the potter's house. Because that's what we always do. And preachers, note to yourself, when you have them stand, that means nobody can sleep. So even if you ain't on that day, they got to wake up at least for the reading of the word. Can you say amen? amen? I know that they're still working out different things, the sound system in and out, but I want you to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. Anytime you have a new building, it takes a minute. That's part of the process to get everything just the way you want it to be. That's normal, okay? That's not inefficiency. That's not bad builders. That's just normal. It's, it's like having a new, new husband. Come on, sisters, don't leave me out there by myself. There's going to be some bugs in it for a little while. There's going to be a little creaking going on. Go to the book of Hebrews chapter 8, verse 1 through 5. I'm scared to look up because I don't want to look in the wrong direction and no married people and start a fight up in here. Amidst the montage of scriptures that have been selected, there is a primary concept that I want you to get tonight that the Holy Spirit challenged me to share with you tonight. And I'll begin reading at verse one. Now the main point of what we are saying is this. We do have such a high priest who sat down at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in heaven and who serves in the sanctuary, the true tabernacle, the true tabernacle set up by the Lord, not by a mere human being. Every high priest is appointed to offer both gifts and sacrifices, so it was necessary for this one also to have something to offer. If he were on earth, he would not be a priest, for there are already priests who offer the gifts prescribed by the law. They serve at a sanctuary that is a copy. Somebody say copy. copy. That is a copy and shadow of what is in heaven. This is why Moses was warned when he was about to build the tabernacle. Watch this. See to it that you make everything according to the pattern shown you on the mountain. See to it. Say that with me. See to it that you make everything according to the pattern shown you on the mountain. Remain standing. I'm going to pray with you. But for the next few minutes, I'm going to talk about built by a pattern. Built by a pattern. Look at somebody say, I was built by a pattern. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us right now as we embark upon the journey of considering your word. It is so divine and it is so holy and so beyond us that we cannot approach it with our finite minds alone, but with the endowment of your Holy Spirit, drop us down into the infinite manifold wisdoms of God and thereby unveil apocalyptic mysteries in such a way that we can see, though through a glass darkly, 
the relevance of this word, this moment, this time, this people, this moment in history. There has never been a moment like this moment. There has never been a time like the time we're living in right now. There will never be another moment like this moment. Thank you for allowing us to experience you in this moment. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody shout amen. amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. In formality, and, and it's, it's, I've already given uh, accolades, but I want to say that this is what we're seated in is inspirational, particularly to believers, to this city, uh, to this state, to the country. It is a testament and proof that if God be for you, the time can be wrong, the buildings can be closed, the banks can be shut down, this can be over here, that can be, it doesn't matter. When God says something and he orders it in your life, he will bring it to pass. That is bigger than the building. The principle that we learn from the building is bigger than the building itself. God gives us things that we might see him more clearly. Jesus performed miracles, not for the miracle's sake, but they, that they might believe on God. That means that when you walk away from here, if all you see is the opulence of this cathedral and fail to embrace the principles that built it, then you will walk out of here with a memory and a picture and maybe a couple of selfies, but that will be all you have. If you go deeper in your thinking to embrace what this represents, then whatever it is that you are believing God for, whether you wrote it on the envelope or not, you ought to walk out of here with a template, an idea, a concept that would help you to believe God when the galing winds of opposition are coming up against you. You must have that stubborn kind of faith that says like Job, though he slay me, Yet shall I trust him. That bodacious, audacious faith that stands up in the midst of uh, atrocities and says, I still believe that you're able to do it. The kind of faith that makes a bleeding woman crawl across a dirty floor to touch the hem of a man who's not looking at her. That kind of faith coupled with action makes things happen. So we don't want you to walk out of here with the fluffy, superficial idea that you just believe it. You may have to crawl for it. You may have to sweat for it. You may have to labor for it. You may have to go through something to get it. That does not negate your faith. It legitimizes your faith. For faith without works, come on somebody, is dead being alone. I thought of when the Lord began to talk to me about this, I had a flashback to a childhood memory. I grew up, uh, my father worked all the time and uh, trying to do whatever he could to make sure we had food on the table. And when we started school, uh, mama didn't buy our school clothes like you all do and get brand names and we didn't have Nike and Polo and all of that kind of stuff like that. Uh, mama would get me ready and take me by the hand and we'd go down behind the house and walk down the path, big long path down to the bottom of the hill in Charleston, West Virginia, where we would wait for the bus. And we would catch the bus and go uptown and we would pass all of the shopping centers and the stores and the displays because she wasn't going in the store to buy my clothes. She was looking for singers. Singers was a place where you bought material she would walk past the material and go to the table in the basement where the remnants were. And she would take a remnant of material and hold it up against me to see if it was enough fabric to make my clothes for school. And on the way out, she would grab a pattern. You all remember patterns? Anybody remember patterns? The young people are looking at me like I'm on drugs, but 
if you're over 50, you know what I'm talking about, about a pattern. And sometimes the pattern would pass around the neighborhood and everybody would use, hey, you didn't throw away the pattern. She'd get the pattern, you know. And she'd come out the store and she used to always say, measure three times, cut once. Because a pattern has a lot to do with the outcome of your life. Whether it be positive or negative, it is the pattern that makes the difference. Understanding that is very important, particularly in the text that we are talking about right now. This is a book of Hebrew. Its authorship is debatable. Some people say it's Apostle Paul. I kind of think it's Apollo, but you can take that with a grain of salt because I wasn't there when they wrote it. I just don't know. They don't know, but it is included in the Holy Writ for us because it is so profound and uniquely written, very prolifically written, uniquely describing from an Old Testament perspective a comparative analysis between the Old Testament theology and New Testament theology. It stands as a bridge between the gulf. The theme of the book is better things. It is offering better things to us. And so because it is written to the intent that it might speak to people who are steeped in religious tradition, it reads quite differently from Romans, which is written to people who were not uh, acquainted with God or Jehovah. It is written different from 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians, where they were idolaters and heathens, and he had to deal with their idolaters' practices and bring them to a place of spirituality. This is written from people whose stumbling block is not idolatry, but their own religion teaching us that religion can be a stumbling block because religion can be a tradition and an idea that we adhere so closely to that we will not allow God to move in our life in a fresh way because we hold him to a creed and a tradition and a pattern of what was. So the writer is comparing what God was doing with what God is doing. <laughs> what God was doing with what God is doing. The problem with most religious people, and I'm not denying that, that Christianity is a religion, but it is more of a relationship. You must realize that some people are so busy holding on to where God was that they do not embrace where he is. Because we serve a moving God. He is always moving. From the book of Genesis, when the Spirit of the Lord moved across the face of the deep, to the book of Revelations, where it says, even so come Lord Jesus, God is always moving. He's a moving God. He's a cloud above us by day in the Old Testament, a pillar of fire by night. He's always on the move. When the woman with the issue of blood touched the hem of Jesus' garment, it wasn't because he stopped. He was on the move. And while he was moving, she crept up behind him and touch the hem of his garment and he stopped and said who touched me when blind Bartimaeus was standing by the side of the road he was moving but blind Bartimaeus put up such a fuss that he arrested him got his attention and the Bible said that he stood still <laughs> great God Almighty I get excited when I hear that because that lets me know that there is a cry that will cause God to stand still there, there is a cry that will get God's attention. There is a cry that will cause God to look in your direction. There is a touch that will make God say, who touched me? I didn't plan to touch you, but because you touched me. And every now and then we get upset because some people are rambunctious in the service and we might be more reserved, but you might be more reserved because you are not desperate. Some people are rambunctious enough that they're willing to break up the sublimity of your understanding in order to get a touch from the Lord. If there's anybody in here like that tonight, warn your neighbor to the left and right, say, I'm desperate tonight. I'm desperate, I'm desperate, I'm desperate, I'm desperate. You're cute, but I'm desperate. You're fine, but I'm desperate. Your eyelashes are a foot and a half long, but I'm desperate. You got on stilettos, but I'm desperate. You clean, but I'm desperate. I'm any desperate people in the place tonight. 
desperate for what God is about to do in your life, desperate for what is about to happen next in your life, desperate not to get stuck in a rut and a routine and a ritual, desperate for a new thing because God said, I will do a new thing in you. The former things have passed away. The truth of the matter is the former things are only there. The Bible says the Old Testament is there. The Old Covenant is there as a schoolmaster to train us. So let's go to school. Look at somebody say, let's go to school. Let's go to school for a moment and see what we are trying to learn. Today, there are many things in the text we could talk about. We could talk about the priesthood of Jesus Christ. We could talk about him entering into a tabernacle, which is the reality of which Moses' tabernacle was only an abstraction. We could talk about shadows and types out of the text. But time will not allow us to exploit all the various components of the text, so we must center in and focus on the word that God told Moses when he got ready to build. He said to Moses, build according to pattern. In other words, what I will allow you to do is only what I created you to do. I will allow you to build what I designed for you to build. And I heard Pastor Fernandez was talking about the reason we can't be jealous of anybody else is because nobody else has your pattern but you. Your pattern is your permission to build in the earth realm whatever God has designed for you to have in heaven. If it's in the blueprint, you can do it. If it's in the design, you can have it. If he decreed it, it shall come to pass. If God spoke it, that settled it. If God decreed it, it will come to pass. And it doesn't matter who's sitting beside you. It doesn't matter how covetous they may be. Whatever God has for you, you is for you because you have the pattern. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? And so uh, the, 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 the Bible talks about uh, it say the Lord build the house. They that labor, labor but in vain that built it is Psalms 127 and 1. And when you read Psalms 127 and 1, it says, unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain. And I thought, wait a minute, unless the Lord builds the house. So that means if God built the house, why do we have builders laboring in any kind of way? If God, unless the Lord builds the house, should have settled it. The, the builders labor in vain. We got two builders. We got two builders here in the text. And there is some confusion in my mind to try to understand the distinction between the Lord who builds the house and the builder who labors only in vain if he tries to build something that God has not built. And I couldn't understand why we had two builders until I realized that God is an architect. And we are a carpenter. And so we are only allowed to build according to design. This building was built on paper before it was ever built with concrete or mortar or stone or brick or block. The design was approved and brought before the city and the city had to approve the drawings before the builder could pour anything. Before you can get a permit to build anything, the pattern is often more important than the building. They're not going to come out and check the building before they check the pattern. Because if you get the right pattern, God. If you get the right pattern, if the pattern is approved, if the infrastructure is in place and the pattern is approved and the permit is given, the permit is permission based on the pattern. You, you missed that. Permission based on the pattern. You don't even have to have it yet. If you got the pattern, God will give you permission 
based on the pattern. So he says to Moses, Moses, you only have permission to build according to the pattern, not according to your budget, not according to your fantasies, not according to your ideas. You only have permission to build what is on the pattern. Don't worry about how much it costs because anything that's on the pattern, I'll pay for. Where are my faith folks in the house tonight? Anything that's on the pattern, I'll pay for. Anything that's on the pattern, I'll give you the grace for. If it's on the pattern for you to get married, I'll give you the grace to be a husband. I'll give you the grace to be a wife. If it's in the pattern and the blueprint for you to be a mother, I'll give you the grace to raise a child that would have drove somebody else crazy, but you got the grace to do it. That's why you can't listen at everybody else's opinion because everybody at work is telling you girl I wouldn't take that I know it's not you you don't have the grace for it but if I had the grace for it God gives me the permission to build according to pattern somebody ought to shock the devil and tell him I got permission yeah, I got permission. I got permission. I'm, I got permission so no devil in hell can stop me from doing what I was created to do because I, I got permission. I can be imitated, but I can't be duplicated because I am a designer's original and I have permission. Did you hear that? I'm going to say that again. I can be imitated, but I can't be duplicated because I am a designer's original, the one of a kind. What God has for me is for me. If I'm coming down your street with this message, uh, give him some sort of indication. That's me, Lord. That's me. He's talking to me. Bill, according to pattern, whether it's a marriage, a church, a business, whether it is a not-for-profit or for-profit, build according to pattern is a principle that permeates our theology. From the book of Genesis to Revelations, you will see that God always honors the order of pattern, permission, and then promise. Pattern, permission, and then promise, pattern, permission, and then promise. That's what we're sitting in right now, is pattern, permission, and then promise. If there were no pattern, there could be no permission. And if there's permission, you're sitting in the promise. And so rather than just to walk out of here talking about how amazing this building is, so it is beautiful, our problem is our carnal minds always walk out with the tangible and would never grab the intangible. We always go out of here talking about the corruptible rather than grasping the incorruptible. When in fact, many times God will give you something like this to become a model in the city so that they might believe that it is possible that people like us can do stuff like this. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying? See, see, sometimes you gotta deprogram your own way of thinking and disrupt your own attitude. Let the enemy talk you out of it and tell you you're too old or you're, you're not smart enough or you're just a woman or you're just a man or you're too dark or you're too light. Or, I don't, no, 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 God don't have no tools. All God has is pattern. <laughs> Permission and promise. Somebody holler pattern, permission and promise. I don't know where you are in those three steps, but somewhere along the way, you're going to go from pattern to permission to promise. Let's go back in the word and talk about this all the way back in creation. The Bible says that when God got ready to speak 
into the world, he, to create the world. He spoke it into existence. He says, let there be light, and there was light, and God said it was good. And he said, let the firmament above the waters be separated from the beneath the firmament beneath the waters, and God said it was good. And God said, let every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth come forth, and God said it was good. And then God spoke and said, let the sea bring forth, and it brought forth fish. But when it got to man, God said, wait a minute, slow down, let us make him after our image and in our likeness. In other words, an image is a pattern. When mama pulled out the pattern, it wasn't a shirt, but it was a pattern of a shirt. God said, I'm going to make you in my image and after my likeness. Now the God who had been used no pattern and speaking everything to existence when he got to you he said I'm going to make you according to pattern after my image and after my kind because I want you to be a true reflection in the earth realm of what I am in heaven in other words when I look at you I want to see myself and so I'm going to stop and I'm going to measure three times before I cut once body, soul, and spirit, it's all got to line up before I cut once because you're going to be a reflection of me in the earth. Are y'all following what I'm talking about? I want to lay something on you tonight. God has got a pattern for every promise he's given you. He's got an image. He's going to bring you close enough to somebody who's doing what you do so that you can get a reflection of what's about to happen in your life. I want to stop and prophesy. God's about to open up new doors, new places, bring you before people that you're going to wonder how did you get there. But God's bringing you in proximity of what he's about to do in your life so you can measure three times and cut once. Look at somebody say, it's going to happen. Yeah, my gift is going to bring me before great men. But after I get there, I'm going to become a great man because I can't stand in the image of something and not be transformed into what I see. What? Moses stood in the presence of God and before the cross was being transformed into what he saw. And God had to stop him because the blood hadn't been shed yet but the longer he looked at something he became what he was looking at that's why the Bible said without a vision the people perish that's why you got to be careful who you look at because when you start looking at something you become what you're looking at and the Bible said that when he came down off of the mountain his face was lit up with the glory of God and he had to veil his face lest they look and see the end of the law. Tell me when I get out of the word. So the God who builds man according to pattern puts in the body of man a unique pattern we call DNA which is a code to a pattern that will identify you even if you can't remember your name. Your DNA will not lie because your blood cells are designed that even if cell, as cells die off, they reproduce according to pattern so that your body doesn't have to deal with an unfamiliar substance. You were designed to regenerate Re regenerate, regenerate. Before you put it into theological context, let's use it in normal terms. So the lobster grows out a claw because it is able to regenerate. That means whatever it lost is coming back. Just as if it never lost 
what was cut off, it's able to regenerate. The snake is able to shed its skin, regenerate more skin, and keep on going because the cells begat, as Genesis says, after its own kind. So no cell can be reproduced in my body that is foreign to my body and my body accepted. That's why when you get a transplant, they got to give you all kinds of medication to talk your body into taking in something that it did not regenerate because your body respects pattern. And if you introduce anything that's not according to the pattern, the body will reject it because the body is only designed to hold something that fits the pattern. Oh, do you hear what I'm saying to you? That's why certain people leave certain churches Churches. You can't stay in there because you don't have the DNA of the ministry. And sooner or later, you're going to have to run out of there and blame somebody for your leaving. But the truth of the body is the body is forcing you out because you're not in the pattern. That's why you hire people who are qualified but can't stay. They don't have the DNA of the organization. Eventually, they get rejected because you can't take an appeal to make me accept a Judas when I'm sitting at the table. He's going to have to get up and move because he's not a part of the body. He's not a part of the pattern. He doesn't have permission so we don't see him on the day of Pentecost because he is denied the promise. Some people who started out with you cannot stay with you because they were not a part of the pattern. Your body is teaching this. Your Bible is teaching this. Your bishop is teaching this. Maybe you should pay attention. How can two walk together, say they agree? You, you got to be in step with me. You got to have my rhythm. You got to have my flow. You got to have my pace. I can't have anybody working for me that don't have my rhythm. I don't need you to get tired and start dragging me down when I'm ready to go. I don't need you to run ahead of me when I'm ready to rest. I need you to catch the rhythm, the rhythm, the rhythm, the rhythm, the rhythm. The God that we serve is a God of rhythm. He's a God of pattern. He's a God of grace. So everything God spoke is moving because God was moving and because God is a moving God everything he created is moving the earth is spinning the planets are spinning because God is spinning that's why Ezekiel said he's a wheel in the middle of a wheel and so as he, as he is a circle he spoke circles and everything God created has got to move because God is moving you can't feel it but the earth is moving because God is moving the sea is swaying because God is moving. And devil, you can't stop me. You got to move out of my way because once I have permission, no devil in hell can stop me from getting where I'm trying to go if I have the pattern and the permission then I'm going to walk into the promise. Now we've got to get the pattern right. You've got to get the pattern right. Now, there might be a flaw in the material, but you've got to get the pattern right. Because we could have a flaw in the material and still make the shirt. <laughs> but if the pattern isn't right, and, and, and you got one arm and, you, and the other arm is down here. That's not going to work. We, we can work out a flaw in the material. <laughs> but we got to have the right pattern. <laughs> Jesus is the perfect pattern for us. That's how we got to be the body of Christ. There's a flaw in our material. <laughs> but our pattern is good, hallelujah. So we have a high priest 
whose pattern is good is so absolute that we're not building according to the Aaronic priesthood. Oh, no, 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 no. We're building according to that which is above the true tabernacle of which Moses built only a pattern. Anytime the Bible says true, it is in a unique category above all others. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness, and yet they perished with hunger. I am the true bread that cometh down out of heaven. Everything they ate was according to pattern. It came to testify of me. You know why we have this building? We have this building to testify. To the community that when the economy was down and the businesses were closing and everybody said it couldn't be done that if God gives you permission you can still get it done oh come on here come on here come on here I'm talking to somebody tonight God brought you here to catch the pattern you don't have to be jealous of anybody just catch the pattern if you catch the pattern, uh, greater works than these shall ye do, because I go to my Father, but you got to catch the pattern. Uh, oh, God. <laughs> so we got to watch our patterns. The Bible says, mock the perfect man. You, you, you got to choose carefully what our patterns are, because we're going to build according to pattern. I, I, I teach a lot of classes on mentoring, and mentoring is wonderful. It's a wonderful thing to mentor somebody. But modeling goes deeper than mentoring. Whatever is modeled in front of you is more deeply ingrained than whoever mentors you. And you're really blessed if your mentor has a model. We are living in a day with mentors who have no model. <laughs> we got people teaching on stuff that they're failing in. <laughs> and they, they say they are mentors, but they have no model. There's something you learn in the development of the model that helps you to effectively mentor. And so don't despise the day of small beginnings because God was modeling you. Not just mentoring you. He put a model in front of you. And then you begin to become what you saw. How many of us find ourselves sounding somewhat like our teachers? Sometimes the teacher is dead, but the model has become ingrained into our DNA. And it's not like we're imitating them. We have become them. Because if you keep watching that, you become that. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm talking about the power of a pattern. And so, so sometimes one of the greatest things God can do is expose you. You haven't lived until you walked into a room that you thought you were too big for. You haven't lived until you walked into a room where you were scared to say you didn't want to sound foolish. That's just God exposing you to a different model, to a different pattern. And if you don't run out of the room and stay in there long enough and keep looking at it, if whatever you look at, you're going to language like. Oh, you didn't get that. Whatever you look at, you're going to language like. See, nobody taught me English, but they just modeled English in front of me. I didn't go to school to learn to speak English because I heard them speak it. I picked it up because they modeled it in front of me. Now, if I get ready to learn Spanish, I got to take a class because it wasn't modeled in front of me. That's why you got to be careful who you let model in front of you because you're only going to draw according to the model. You're only going to shape the clay according to the model. You're only going to build the building according to the model. You're only going to build your family according to the model. You're only going to become the man who you let model you. 
And we are living in a time where there are so few models. All you got to do is scroll down Instagram and you can find anybody who wants to mentor you. Because Instagram doesn't require that you have a model. You can just be a life coach. You should see the people who are talking to teaching on marriage and don't have a good one. I think, baby, don't say nothing about that. Preach something else about Malachi or something. Don't do that. Don't do Don't mentor what you can't model. You can't mentor riches and be broke. You can't mentor healing and be sick. Come on, somebody. The word has to be proven in you. The husbandman must be first, first partaker of the fruit. You have to experience it before you can regenerate it. Can I go deeper? We are in desperate need of more patterns in our homes, in our communities, in our churches. We are in desperate need of more patterns. Yes, we have God who has gone beyond the veil but left us apostles, prophets, teachers, and evangelists all for the perfecting of the saints until we all come into the unity of the faith so that we would have somewhat of a pattern to model the fivefold ministry collectively. No one individual can do it, but collectively they model and represent Christ in the earth until we all come into the unity of the faith. Am I, am I right? Okay, so here's our problem. We got people getting married who love weddings, but not marriage. So they had a pattern for the gown. And they became a beautiful bride. But they didn't have a pattern to be a wife and a mother. So you're a great bride, but not a... We have men who look good in a tux. Biceps and triceps and everything bulging like it's supposed to bulge in the place it's supposed to bulge in. Looking all good. Look like a great groom. The groom is fine. Great pictures. But the groom can't go from a groom to a husband because he hasn't seen it. We have men who are growing old and don't know how to get old because they haven't been around enough old men to have it modeled. Yeah. See, it's very important that you have an older version of you to model what the next stage looks like so you can learn how to be happy in the stage you're in. And if you're not happy in the stage you're in, you will lust for what was because you had a pattern for what was, but no pattern for what is. So you will despise where you are and crave where you used to be if you don't have a model in front of you. And the craving for a model is what made Elijah leave the 12th yoke of oxen and kiss his mother and father goodbye because Elijah had passed by and he said, that's a better model for me. Sometimes you're not raised by the best model and sometimes God will send somebody from the outside to come along to model something to you that will make you kill the ox and burn up the plow to get a chance to be exposed to something that you weren't exposed to before. Am I in the right place or not? So stop feeling sorry for yourself. If you didn't get it from your mother and you didn't get it from your father, God's going to send an Elijah. If he has to yank him out the cave, he's going to send somebody by to model what you need. And when you see him, drop everything and follow them. 
Drop everything and follow them. Drop everything and follow them. And Elijah says, if you see me when I'm taken up, I will give you a double portion of my spirit. In other words, you got to measure three times and cut once. I'm not going to give it to you now because you haven't measured enough. But if you see me, if you keep walking with me, if you see me at Gilgal, if you see me in the Jordan, if you see me at all these different locations and stages, if you see me happy and see me sad and see me depressed and see me in sorrow and see me in tribulation and see me when people talk about me and see me when I'm broken, see me when I'm successful, then, 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 then you can cut one time and you're sure. Take note, sisters. Don't marry anybody that you ain't walked with long enough to see them in mood swings and situations. Just because they're cute uh, and the package is cute doesn't mean the pattern is right. Uh, until you see him mad, until you see him mad, seen him sad, seen him depressed, you don't know who he is. Shut up! <laughs> Who am I preaching to tonight? Glory to God, glory to God. God's gonna bring you into rooms that you may not be related to. And you're going to have to kiss mother and father goodbye because your pattern has come. Touch three people and say, my pattern is coming. My pattern is coming. Oh my God, my pattern is coming. My pattern is coming. This is my pattern. This is my pattern. This is my pattern. This is my blueprint. My pattern is coming. God has sent a pattern and a blueprint of my next. I'm not talking about getting saved. Jesus is the pastor. Pattern for that. But what is my next now that I'm saved? How do I walk out my faith? I need that to be modeled in front of me. And if I don't have it modeled, I'm going to imitate and fake what I cannot realize. But every now and then God will send you a model. And when God sends you a model who becomes a pattern to you, whatever you got to do, stay close. Orba said, I'm going back home because she was more related to the Moabites than she was to Naomi. But Ruth said, as the Lord lives, I will not leave thee. I'm going with you. Thy God shall be my God. Thy people shall be my people. Where thou dwellest, I will dwell. Where thou diest, I will die. Why? Because I figured something. You're more than my mother-in-law. My husband is dead. You're my pattern. There's no reason for me to stay but I can't go. Your son is dead. He is what made us family, but we're still connected because you have modeled something in front of me that is a pattern that you're gonna be the one that reveals my next. And it is no coincidence that Naomi brought Ruth to the bed of Boaz. And strangely, she felt more comfortable, though she was not kin, she was kind. Sometimes your kin is not your kind. Can, can we do, can, can we be real for a minute? 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 Timothy's cry is, I need a model. Paul becomes his pattern. So the closer Paul gets to death, he is writing to Timothy because he has been his pattern. He gives him permission, preach the gospel, be instant, in season and out of season. For the time will come that men will not endure sound doctrine, having itching ears. They will heap to themselves teachers that only satisfy the flesh. But be strong in the Lord. Listen to him, how he, is, how he is giving him the pattern for his next. 
Then Paul writes to him, the time for my departure is at hand. You remember how they laid the pattern down and they would pin the pattern to the fabric and then they would cut around the fabric. Come on, somebody. And they would stitch it around. Once they got it stitched around, they would pull the pattern off because when that which is perfect is come, that which is in part shall be done away with. And Paul says, the time for my departure is at hand. And he says, you got to let me go because my job was just to bring you into your next. Let me close. I want to get to this. What do you see when you come in this building? You see a building and pews and beautiful lights and a sanctuary. I see a brain. We are sitting in somebody's mind. You're sitting in somebody's head. Somebody thought it. And it became, what are you thinking? What's in your head that God is about to do in your life? Because if God has given you the pattern, <laughs> Don't worry about the provision. Don't worry about the provision. Don't worry about it. Because if God gave you the pattern, he's going to give you the provision. So he says, Moses, build according to pattern, not according to provision. Right. Build according to pattern. Build what you see in your head. Build what you see in yes. your head. That's why the devil's out to your mind. That's why he tried to distract you and upset you and get you all in your feelings because you need a clear head because God is going to give you the blueprint in your head. True success is the outworking of the internal. When the abstract becomes concrete, when the invisible becomes visible, when thought becomes matter and the word was made flesh, Thought became matter, logos became flesh, it became human. This is the carnation of a thought, the incarnation of an idea. What are you thinking? If there's nothing in your head, it's because you've been around people who don't think. If you ain't thinking nothing, you're around people that don't think anything. They dumb down your creativity and they make you think being empty headed is normal. When I said, what are you thinking? Your baby should have leaped. Your business should have leaped. Your ministry should have leaped. That home for unwed mothers should have leaped. There should be something that's in your spirit right now. And you don't know how you're going to do it, but you can see it in the spirit. You can see it in your heart. You don't know when, you don't know how, but you can see it. You got the pattern in your head. And you wake up in the middle of the night and you're thinking about it. And you try not to think about it. And you think about it some more. And you say, to I missed my turn. But it keeps popping up in your head over and over again. Because you can't be happy to have the pattern and not see the promise. This is what I want real quick. Everybody who's got something in their head that you cannot shake and you don't know, you don't have all the answers and you don't know when and you don't know how and you don't know where, but it won't leave you alone. It's in you. Run to the front of this church. I came here for you. Teach your coach. I came here. I came here for that pattern 
in your head. You don't know how to produce it, and you don't know how to get there, and you don't know what's going to happen. You're frustrated, and you're scared to believe, and it looks like it's not going to work, and nobody's helping you, and you're thinking maybe it's a lie, but God has put it down inside of you, and it will not let you go, and it's worrying you, and you feel incapable, and you don't feel qualified, but it's down inside of you. This building is a sign. It's not just a sanctuary, it's a sign that without the benefit of having the help of the environment, God is going to allow you to build according to pattern. Tonight is supposed to be a faith resurrecting moment that impregnates you with the possibilities of what starts as an idea. I'm walking around in somebody's brain. <laughs> I'm walking around in somebody's idea. I'm walking around in a thought. A promise leads to permission. A pattern to permission leads to a promise. You need a pattern. You need a pattern and you know it. You need a pattern. And it may not be in your house. And you may have to kiss your mother and father goodbye. But God's gonna cause an Elijah to pass by you. And it's gonna give you a pattern. You're gonna build according to pattern. I don't have time to give you all that I wanted to give you because I have broken down how each cell has a pattern. And as it passes away, it regenerates. Where we get in the gospel, regeneration is to walk in the newness of life. That Christ regenerated himself in us. <laughs> That's why we're called the body of Christ. So while the body was leaving, it was staying. God, I wish I had time. You're at the Last Supper. Jesus is sitting there in human form. He is the physical body, and he is breaking the bread, which is the memorial body, and he is giving it to the church, the mystical body, <laughs> and promising to come back in his glorified body. And it's all happening at the, the physical body, the memorial body, the mystical body, and the glorified body have all come into this one moment and it's here right now. And he says, taste it till you see it. And as often as you do this, <laughs> you do show forth my death until I come. So you got the body talking to the body, serving the body, all at the table, waiting on the glorified body. Do you hear what I'm saying? Look at, look at, look, look, look at, how, oh, I gotta stop. Look at how many, look at how many forms the body shows himself. That, 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 that I'm, I'm trying to disrupt your thinking. The problem with the disciples, they only recognized Jesus in one form. When he came walking across the water, they thought he was a ghost because they only recognized him in one pattern. And they did not recognize him whenever he changed his method. They didn't accept the problem with the church is anytime God changes his method, we don't recognize him because we're looking for a churchy Jesus. Focus on what God put in your pattern in your head. Focus on it. Stop, on the, stop focusing on the obstacles and focus on the problems. Focus on the promise. That's why I wrote disruptive thinking. I need to disrupt your old pattern of thinking and get out of that box of living up to somebody else's expectation. You don't have to be what they expected, just be you. Now, this is gonna disrupt the second half of your life because you have gone as far as you can go being who you were. 
what brought you here will not take you there. So we got some stuff to kill out. This old skin, this old cell has got to die. We got to regenerate right here at the altar because we're going from pattern to permission to promise. Let's stop by permission for, for, for a minute. Have you given yourself permission to become what you see? Did you catch that? Did, have you given yourself permission to become what you see? Because if you have the pattern and you don't allow the permission to stomp out and disrupt the way you thought about yourself, you won't feel worthy of the opportunity that God is about to release on you. Am I, am I talking to somebody? So, so disruptive thinking is as much about getting in your head and changing the way you think so that you can give yourself permission. I'm not trying to get God to give me permission because God has already given me permission. But sometimes God will give you permission and you will self-sabotage the permission because you feel inadequate and you have imposter syndrome and you talk yourself back down to what's normal rather than what's promised. So we're going to walk through this. We got the pattern because you're focusing on it. Next, we're gonna give ourselves permission to change. Permission to evolve, permission to be disruptive. We're gonna give ourselves permission even if some people don't like us. We're gonna give ourselves permission even if it disappoints what was normal. I was walking up the steps one day and as I was walking up the steps, I noticed something. I got a step that creaks. It doesn't creak when you step on it. It creaks when you step off of it. The people who are making the noise are only making the noise because you left. You got to be disruptive enough not to run back down the stairs to stop the noise. Am I talking to you? Throw your hands up, say, I give myself permission to walk into new realms of the spirit. I give myself permission to live the life that God has for me. I give myself permission to break out of the prison of other people's expectations. I give myself permission to receive the promise that God is about to release in my life. Now lift your hands, keep them up there. Keep them up there, keep them up there. I'm praying for you right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. Don't let anybody leave this stage without a transformative experience with you. The life-changing power of the Holy Ghost is going to rearrange their lives, their thinking, their business. I thank you right now, Lord, for disruption, not destruction, disruption, disruptive thinking, disruptive promises, disruptive ideas, disruptive that come in their spirit because they have been in this building and they have seen what a man's mind can do to matter. Now, as a man thinketh, so is he. Right now, Lord, I'm praising you for things that are just in my head. I'm praising you for what's next. I'm praising you for things that I haven't touched yet. I'm praising you, Lord, because if I'm standing in somebody's mind, before it's over, I'm going to stand in what's mine. Uh, and I'm praising you for it right now. And I'm praising for things that are not as though they were. And I'm thanking you for it right now. I can't hear you. 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 Give me 30 seconds of crazy praise. 30 seconds of crazy praise. 30 seconds of crazy praise. Absolute emphatic praise. Jesus, you're the center of my joy, praise. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, 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 come on. Wait, wait, here we go. Praise him like it's already time. Praise him 
like it's already done. Praise him like it's already done. Praise him like it's already done. Come on, come on, get your praise out. Get your praise out. And praise him like it's already done. Praise him like it's already done. Praise him like it's already done. I feel a shift in this place. I feel a change in the atmosphere. I feel a glory coming in this room. I dare you to open your mouth and praise him like it's all. Yes! Whatever he promised you, you gotta build it. Build that marriage, build that child, build that dream, build that promise, build that thing, build it, build it, build it. I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost coming down in this place. Somebody shout, yeah! Measure three times and cut once. Uh, you measure three times and cut once. Uh, touch three people and say, build it, build it, build it. Build it, build it, build it, build it, build it, build it. Give them permission, build it, build it, build it, build it. If Bishop can build it, I can build it. Uh, hallelujah, if right direction can build it, I can build it. I'm standing in the promises uh, of Christ my Savior. I'm standing in the promises uh, of Christ my King. I'm standing in the promises uh, of my God and my Savior. I'm standing in the promises uh, of the eternal, uh, invisible, uh, the ultimate, uh, the sovereign, uh, the mighty. I'm standing in. I literally got to go back to Dallas, but it seems like the Holy Ghost won't turn me loose. Something is breaking in this place. Can you feel it? Something is breaking in this place. I don't know who it is, but you had to be here tonight. You just had to be here tonight. You had it in your spirit. I'm going to be in there tonight. I don't know who else is coming, but I'm going to be in there tonight. Hallelujah! person by both hands we're coming into agreement like cells in the body we're touching and agreeing we're going to build according to pattern I want you to pray for the person that you're touching that whatever God created them to do with the time they got left that they would focus like never before that the thing would come to pass, that it would speak and not lie. I want you to speak that word over there like, ah, I can't hear you. Pray like you're mad about it. Pray like you mean it. We call it done in the name of Jesus. And the devil can't stop it. And the devil can't block it. And the devil can't hinder it. 
in Jesus' name. What God has for me is for me. What God said you can do, you're going to do. Where God said you're going to go, you're going to go. What God told you to build, you're going to build. What God said you can have, you can have. I don't care who said you can't do it. That Satan, the Lord rebuke you. We're God's man. We're God's woman. And if God said we can do it, we can do it. If God said we can have it, we can have it. We call it forth in the name of Jesus. We speak grace, grace to every obstacle. Grace, grace to every problem. Grace, grace to every hindrance. In Jesus' name, give God some praise. Give God some praise. Somebody shout, I'm about to build something. I'm about to build something. I don't know where the money is coming from, but I'm about to build something. I don't know where the help's coming, but God's given me the strength to build something. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. If God said build, go build. Go build. Go build. Somebody give God some praise in this house. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. Hey. Somebody just got your mojo back. Somebody just got your groove back. Somebody just got your joy back. Somebody just got your strength back. Come on. Somebody just got your gusto back. Go do it. Go build it. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. Come on, thank God for the word tonight. As you go back to your seat, tell somebody, it was good for us to be here. It was good for us to be here. I'm going to ask y'all not to leave. I done had Bishop J's here before. I know how y'all do. I'm going to ask you not to leave. We need to officially dedicate this as a church tonight. Bishop Jace was very generous with us with his time. His plane got to be in the air by 10 o'clock. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You may be seated. I'm going to ask two of my bestest friends in the whole wide world, Bishop George C. Wright and Bishop Liston Page to join me here. As we, Bishop George C. Wright and Bishop Liston Page, we knew each other before anybody else knew our names. <laughs> Going back 40 years. And it's good when people can celebrate with you who know where God brought you from. Amen. I don't mean any harm, but I, I'm scared of some of y'all who don't have no old friends. All your old friends, they like in the last year or two. Like, we don't really know you. So I thank God for these men of God. Come and join me up here, brethren. Let's stand. As we go through our litany, our official dedication litany, it'll be on the screens as well. For those who don't have one of the official journals, I'm going to start off, recite as the assembly, and we'll continue. We declare that this sanctuary is set apart for the worship and praise of the living God in spirit and truth 
and the proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Say it together. We declare that this sanctuary is devoted to the preaching of the gospel to sinners and the teaching of the word to the saints so we may be edified and grow in grace and in the knowledge of truth and apply God's word in our lives. We declare that the incense of prayer and the aroma of praise shall ascend to God from this sanctuary. Here shall the ordinances of the Lord be observed in the fear and reverence of God. We declare that, that the, the word of God, God which lives and abides, and abides forever, shall be sounded forth as a trumpet in this place for salvation and deliverance of the lost. This sanctuary shall be a perpetual lighthouse to guide God's people into his perfect will for their lives, that they may know the way and walk in it. We declare that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Therefore, all who enter into this sanctuary shall find refuge from despair and a safe harbor when storm arise in their lives. We, we declare that, that this house will endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. No spirit of discord, strife, envy, or jealousy shall abide within these walls, but the love of God, which has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, is experienced and displayed by all who enter into this place. We declare that every word spoken, every song sung, every action performed in this place is acceptable unto God and offered unto him as a sweet-smelling sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving with the fruit of our lips. We declare, we declare that, that the, the vision, vision of this ministry continues, continues to be fulfilled to, to such an extent, extent that whole life prosperity is experienced in this community, city, state, nation, and ultimately the world, so that the lives will be transformed and generations will be changed. We boldly declare that there is abundant provisions for the vision of this house, and there is no lack of any good thing for this church, its vision, its members, nor its partners. We boldly declare that this ministry will experience abundance of provision corporately as well as individually for all its members and partners. We declare, believe, and receive these things to the glory of God, our Father, and to the honor of Jesus Christ, the Anointed One, by the power of the Holy Spirit, our Comforter, and our Guide. We, we dedicate, dedicate this, this house, house for the sanctification of families, for the training and nurturing of our children, for the preparation of our youth, for the ministry equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, and the salvation of the world. We, we dedicate, dedicate this house to transform lives and impact generations, to be a light in this community, to aid the poor, to promote genuine fellowship, and to expand the kingdom of God throughout the world. We dedicate this house to provide an impactful worship experience with the spirit of excellence that creates an environment to encounter God and connect with people. For the worship of Jesus Christ, our King, and for the preaching of the gospel of the kingdom, to be light to the world and the salt of the earth until the return of Jesus Christ, our Savior, and King in his glory and majesty, we dedicate this house. Come on and praise God with us. Hallelujah! Remain standing. We started this ministry, came to this city. We started this ministry within four months, having a Bible study in our home of moving to this city. Didn't know anyone or anything. Then we had our first service in April of 1996. About a year or two later, another pastor after our church started growing, who I didn't know came up to me and said you came and started this church in this city and you didn't check with the fathers of the city and I said I would have but the Lord didn't tell me who they were 
So now as we officially start worshiping in new, new states where now I know better, and the Bible says, and well, that I say rather, that when you know better, you do better. So now that I know who the fathers of the cities are, I asked the father of the city, Reverend Charles Jackson of the Brooklyn Baptist Church, if he would come forth and give us our final dedication prayer. Thank you, Father of the city. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, to whom the earth belongs, the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein, we acknowledge you just now to be the Lord of all life, from whom comes every good and perfect gift. It is with glad tidings of great joy that we celebrate who you are on this special night. Our hearts are filled with praise and our cups overflow with thanksgiving. We thank you, Lord, for the pattern, permissions, and promises afforded us by your grace and mercy. We thank you, Lord, for graciously and generously smiling on Bishop Herbert Bailey, Dr. Marcia Bailey, and the family of the faith who fellowship with the body of Christ at the Right Direction Church International. We thank you, Lord, for the faithful stewardship of your people who have enabled this sanctuary to come to be a place for worship and praise under your holy name. We already feel a favored anointing on this sanctuary. So we ask right now in the mighty name of Jesus that every day you will renew this sanctuary with fresh oil of your anointing. And Heavenly Father, when people gather to worship and give praises unto you, saturate the atmosphere through your Holy Spirit with glory divine. As worshipers enter in and exit from, may they leave this hallowed, holy house of worship rejoicing in who you are as the God of our salvation. As people worship, may they know, God, that they have been in the presence of the living and the loving Lord. Oh, God, our Father, we dedicate right now everything in and everything around the sanctuary to the glory of the name of Jesus Christ. And we claim God that is under your rule. And we declare and decree peace and prosperity and prominence and power in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray that in this sanctuary, the unsaved will meet the Savior. The prodigal will be welcomed and the saints will be revived. Fire will burn and little wheels will turn. We thank you, God, and we give you the glory for it all in the name. Jesus Christ, the victorious name of Jesus Christ, the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. We dedicate it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank God Almighty. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel a release in here now. I feel a release in here now.
sometimes you just got to shout it out. Hey, hey, you've been so good. Woo. I, 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 know, I know we're in a $17 million church, but I feel a, I feel a storefront praise. Hey! Don't lose your praise. I don't care what level you go to. How much you get, don't lose your praise. It might not be a right direction. My God. Listen, there's a, before, we, before we leave tonight, there's a couple of people I want to publicly thank for being with us tonight. Bishop Jake talked about the mind. He talked about pattern. But there were people who helped us with that. And there's some people here tonight. Um, we have some people here from the construction company that built this edifice, built this right over here to my right. Stand up. De Jeff, Jeff London, Brian. They were here. Come on, they helped us keep it together and overseeing everything. These are from edifice builders. I thought I saw, Scotty, you here? Is that Scotty over here? Come on, stand up, Scotty. Scotty is the architect from ADW Architects. Is anybody here from Truist? From Truist Bank? Tru, Truist Bank, they're here. Well, even if they wasn't here, they, they know what they're going to say. They, they ain't here, but they know they, we got to be there, though. Know? We got to be there every month. <laughs> and I want to thank God for this, this host of pastors and bishops who have come from around the United States. Thank you all so much. Thank you. I'm not going to start naming you, but we got people here from North Carolina and Florida and West Virginia. And amen. And I mentioned Florida, a couple of folks from Florida and Georgia. Uh, Pastor, Pastor Baker, he's going to be preaching for us on Sunday morning, y'all. Good Lord, have mercy. Amen. Uh, and my, uh, my, my sons and daughters in the ministry, part of our Right Direction Fellowship, God bless y'all. Thank y'all for being here. Some of my covenant brothers also from CDMA, Creflo Dollar Ministry, Ministry Association. Thank you all for being here as well. Amen. Uh, let, 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 me, let me just, uh, Pastor Brian, come here real quick, real quick, real quick, real quick. Both of y'all come, come here. This, this is the man, y'all. Let me tell you, this is the man. Some of y'all heard me talk about it. Thank you. Um, but he's, you know, he was also an example of faith. He stood in faith for how many years? 20 years. For 20 years of a building in Marietta, Georgia, that he said was his. He saw it in a dream. Saw it in a dream 20 years, and I had never seen the building before. I only had about 15 people. And so he stood, he said that was his building. Well, Pastor Dollar had a campus at that building. And Pastor Dollar had a church there. And, and then Pastor Dollar, uh, the building became available for sale. For how much? 3.5 million. For 3.5 million. So he went to go see the building. He didn't have no money, but he had faith because first you got to go see. 
And what happened when you went to go see the building? Tell them that's the testimony. So uh, the Lord drove me to the building two years after I saw it. Dollar didn't have it. It went into foreclosure. I couldn't buy it. Dr. Dollar bought it cash, paid cash. Because he quit for a dollar. <laughs> so last year, I almost died of COVID. And I prayed and I said, Lord, you can't let me die right now because you hadn't given me the building that you showed me in a dream. So the Lord healed me of COVID. That was in January. In April, Dr. Dollar put the building on sale for $3.5 million. It appraised at three point seven. million. And then the Lord spoke to him and said, make a man's 20-year dream come to pass. He sent his CEO to visit with me at the building, and the CEO says these words. Pastor Dollar believes that the seed is greater than the sale. So if you will accept it, we would like to sow this building into your ministry. And he gave me that building debt free. $3.5 million debt free. Just gave it to him. Just, just gave it. You can go sit down now. You can go sit down. It's my church. Now, what we did, okay, let me take a little time. As talking about patterns, what we did, when I heard that testimony, I, we were still believing God for money and everything to get going and and do this, and I think we may have been in the midst of this, and so I said, how much was the building? 3.5 million that he gave him. I said, well, I can't give you the tithe on that, but we're going to send you $35,000. In the midst of us building this building, we sold 35,000. You didn't tell that part. We sold $35,000 into him, his ministry, because I said, I need that kind of favor. And throughout this building project, God spoke to me various ministries to sow into. I can start naming them all around the country. Uh, but can I tell you, seed, time, and harvest is a principle that cannot lie. Amen? And so we rejoice with them. We, we rejoice, you know. Yeah, we rejoice. How, how many does that building seed? A thousand. A thousand. Debt, debt free. And Pastor Dollar, being Pastor Dollar, Creflo Dollar, he fixed it up, got everything ready, and then put it, and then just sold it to him. Come on, look at someone saying, look at somebody tell him, you're next in line. Come on, you, you, got, you got to put your Shirley Caesar voice on there. Then. Tell him again, you're next in line. You don't know how God going to bless you. Amen. Um, Again, a couple of people I want to thank. Uh, our I, now this this is really good, y'all. Our the, our sheriff is here tonight. Sheriff Leon Lot, Richmond County Sheriff. God bless you, Pastor. I called him, a text him, or something. I told him what we were doing. I said, and uh, and he said, "Well, I'll be there." <laughs> he told me, "I don't know if you can be here Sunday," but he said, "I'm going to be there for both." I, you don't have to do that, but I'm not trying to put any pressure on you anything. But that was months ago, and, and he's here tonight. But Richland County Sheriff's Department, I'm sure they rejoice with us in a great way because they can work less now that we got this building. For years, our neighbors called the Richland County Sheriff's Department on us, telling us we're making too much noise. The neighbor <laughs> across from our worship center there he would get so mad that while we were in worship, he would take his motorcycle, turn it towards our church, and blow it out. <laughs> we had a concert with Todd Delaney a couple weeks ago, and they had to keep coming by then. One of his deputies said, when are y'all going to be in your new building? So they rejoiced with us. That we now have a soundproof edifice. Come on now. Thank you, Sheriff. Thank, thank, thank you, Sheriff. Um, see, who, who else did I want to make mention of? Uh, I think someone from our, our county council is here. Is that Derek Pugh? 
Come on up. Uh, you, you have something to do? What did you tell me? You just tell me he's here. Okay, all right. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much for being with us tonight. tonight. Okay, was there anyone else I was supposed to recognize? Okay. Your, this is your phone. It went off and I don't have your... You want to get... Okay. Senator John Scott. Is he, is he still here? We got too loud for him or too long for him. Where yet? God bless you. Senator Scott for also, also being with us. I bless you. I mentioned, of course, our own, uh, one of our ministers and members, Gretchen Barron, also right here. She's one of the hardest working women in politics. Yes, Lord. She always texts me. Bishop, I ain't going to be there because I got to do such such for the community. Praise the Lord. We appreciate her so much. All right. Uh, I want to tell you, we're getting ready to dismiss. Uh, they tell me it's raining outside. Y'all know we used to know when it was raining outside. We used to hear every raindrop. Now we don't hear the raindrop. I do want to say, come on, thank, uh, thank God for uh, Pastor Travis Green being with us tonight from Forward City. He came by one day just to, just to share with us and I'm saying participate in worship. Okay, thank you. And y'all, can y'all do me a favor? I really need you to make a big fuss out of this. Y'all know if he could have, he would have been here. And that is the OB, the original bishop, Bishop Scotland Bailey, who birthed me into ministry. He's watching online. Can y'all stand up and let him see you? Uncle Scotty, Bishop Bailey, we honor you. Thank you. This is because of you. I got saved because of you. I learned what a man of God was because of you. And he would have been here. We can be seated. He would have been here. As a matter of fact, um, I tried to make him forget that we were having it because he, has, he hasn't been, he was having some health challenges and I knew every, he would try to get here and I called up his doctor, spoke with his doctor. His doctor told me I would not try to have him make that trip. So I told everybody we're gonna stop talking about it, we ain't gonna mention it. And Bishop Bailey Wednesday night kept blowing my phone up. He said, I'm gonna be at that dedication service. I said, Uncle Scott, he, he said, no. I said, the doctor said you can't go, he said, I'm going to be all right. And, and, and they tell me he started calling around trying to get somebody to get him here. He wasn't able to be here, but he is, I am here. We are here because of him, because the seeds that he placed in me. He's 85 years old, amen, and I'm just, our prayers that God continue to give him longer life, longer life, and to renew his strength. Okay, that's it. Anything else I need to do? Uh, in the case. They say it's raining, but again, we have people who are going to shuttle, those who may need shuttle to, to, to the furthest parking spaces. Uh, come on, stand with me tonight. Thank you again, all of you. This has been a great day. Amen. And we honor God for the ministry gift of Bishop T.D. Jakes. Nobody like him. Nobody like them. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes? If there's anyone here tonight, you're not saved, you're not born again. Maybe because of something you heard tonight, you made a decision. I want to make Jesus Christ the Lord of my life. I want to give you that opportunity to do that tonight. If you have people pray with you and pray for you, just slip up their hand and say, pray for me. I want to make Jesus Christ the Lord of my life. I want to become a Christian tonight. Secondly, if you walked away from God and you want to come back to him, this is a good time to renew your fellowship with the Lord. Thirdly, if you're here and you want to receive or know more about the gift of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, the people that can minister to you and give you some understanding, any of those things, as I look, as I peruse the congregation tonight, lift that hand up and say, pray for me. I want to be saved. I want to recommit my life to the Lord. I want to receive the Holy Spirit. Anybody? If you want to join this church, come back on Sunday. We're going to be here. We ain't going nowhere. Come back on Sunday. Father, we're just so grateful for your mercy, for your goodness, for your love. Thank you for 
all that you have done for Right Direction corporately, all that you've done for us individually. Thank you for every seed that's been sown through the gifts of love, through their labor, the human resources, the financial resources, the material resources. Thank you, Father, that the best is yet to come for us individually as well as collectively. And thank you, Father, as we continue to build and to move and to progress according to the pattern of the Holy Spirit. You will continue to make crooked places straight, rough places smooth, move every obstacle, and we declare that the rest of our days will be the best of our days. In the name of Jesus. Now as we leave this place, I declare the angels of God surround us, goodness and mercy follows us, and that the joy of the Lord will be your strength. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Thank you for coming out tonight.